What's up? Hey, what's up, guys? This is Mr. Maestas here, and I am uh, going to drink some water real quick, so give me a second. And while I'm doing that, why don't you take a look at the curve sketching recipe that we talked about uh, a little bit in pre-calculus in Unit 1, and then we're going to add in a few things that we know now from calculus. So take a second while I drink some water here. That's refreshing. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do this, and I'd like to show you an example of how to put that all together uh, to get a, a you know a fairly accurate sketch of a graph of a function. So let's take a look at an example. If I can figure out what I'm doing here. All right, here we go. So I put the recipe up on top here, and we're going to go ahead and uh, um, you know do this problem here. And what I have here is my function f of x equals three x minus two over x squared minus 2x plus 1 and I have done f prime and f double prime for you so you don't have to worry about doing the quotient rule and blah 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 we're just gonna look at the gist of what we're doing here so first thing we're gonna do find the domain the domain of our function we're gonna need to factor this out right so we got x minus 1 squared not equal to 0 so the domain is x not equal to 1 uh, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. And do we have any holes in the graph? Well, it doesn't look like we're canceling anything out here, so there's no holes. So we'll put none. How about x-intercepts? x-intercepts, we're going to take this top part right here, set equal to 0. And that's going to give us an x-intercept at x equals, looks like, 2 thirds. Um, and this is going to be an odd x-intercept because, you know, well, look, it's odd. It's going to go through it, right? y-intercept y-intercept we are going to plug in 0 in for x and we're going to get negative 2 so y equals negative 2 all right eb that's n behavior so n behavior i like to put in terms of limits so the limit as x approaches positive infinity so what's going on as x approaches positive we got to look at the n behavior are there any horizontal asymptotes well uh yeah there's a horizontal asymptote at, at y equals 0 because the bottom has a square and the top does not so at the bottom has a higher power than the top so we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero and this is the same as x approaches negative infinity and you know what if you want to you can just you know put ha y equals zero ha ha i don't i'm not sure horizontal asymptotes are any funnier than vertical asymptotes um, but we label them as such <laughs> All right, that's a bad joke. Anyway, uh, let me continue on going. Symmetry. Are, is there any symmetry going on here? Uh, I don't think so. There's nothing that's odd or even about this, so we're going to go and say none. Now, relative min, relative max, and our points of inflection. This is where we got to do some calculus. So all this stuff was some pre-calculus. Now we got the calculus stuff here. So we're going to first, we're going to take F prime, and I'm going to go ahead and go over here. I'm going to make an F prime chart. And I know that at 1, I am going to have a uh, 1, x equals I'm a vertical asymptote. And then if I solve this, set this equal to 0, I'm going to have 1 third. And this is a possible, this is a critical number, right? So now i got to check um, all the signs. Well, when I check these signs, I put 0 in here, I'm going to get, get a negative. Then I'm going to get a positive. And then I'm going to get a negative. So what that tells me is that f is going to go uh, decreasing, increasing, and then decreasing again. So then I'm going to go and check f double prime. And f double prime is going to have a 0. Uh, and again, 1 is going to be a vertical asymptote. So what's going to happen with this is x equals 0 here. Uh, when I plug in, I'm going to get negative into my second derivative then I'm gonna get positive and positive again so I'm gonna have concave down concave up and concave up again right and this is a possible point of inflection or a pip so how do we know if one-third is going to be a relative min or max? Well, obviously we see it's kind of, it looks like a relative min. If we plugged in one-third in here, it's going to be concave up. So using the second derivative test, this is a relative min. 
So we've got a relative min at one third comma. Now we're gonna to wanna to plug in one third to figure out what into our F function. That's gonna get us negative nine fourths as our answer for that. So there's our relative min. We don't have any relative max. We can see that by our F prime and F double prime number lines. And we do have a point of inflection and that's gonna be at zero comma two when we plug it in. All right, so let's go and put it all together and we're going to go in and let's first, uh, well, let's draw our vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Then we will plot some points here. Um, Two-thirds is our x-intercept, so that's going to be about right here. And negative 2 is our y-intercept, so that's about right here. We have a relative min at one-third, negative nine-fourths. It's about right here. And we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, like that. Our end behavior, okay, so let's take a look at this. We're gonna, we're gonna go decreasing to one third. So we're gonna go decreasing here. Uh, but when we get to zero, it's gonna be concave down. It's gonna look like this and approach our asymptote. So it's decreasing and concave down. Then it, at zero, it goes concave up. It's gonna go this way and approach our asymptote because it's increasing. And then it's gonna decrease and go concave up. So like that. And there's a sketch of our graph. Done. All right, so here we've got our pre-calculus stuff and here we've got our calculus stuff and we put it together and we get our graph. All right, all right, folks. Uh, that's one example. I'll be back in another video to show you another example. See you soon. Bye.